This is Pastor Jeff Chavis. I'm the pastor of Church Online, a unique online community of faith. You can find us at churchonline.com, but we spell that differently. We spell it C-H-R-C-H because we say all that's missing is you. Churchonline.com. I've got a question for you this morning. Have you started packing up the decorations yet? Are your Christmas decorations coming down, totally down? We haven't even thought about it. We like to wait until later into the new year. I don't know what your tradition is, but I know we've started taking down some of them. Uh, still have the lights up out front. But what about that nativity set? You know what I'm talking about. Most of us have one in our home. That little scene, the nativity scene, the creche, as it's called, where we see Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, maybe some animals about. Author Ace Collins says that those images of Christ's first days in the manger in Bethlehem usually conjure up joy, peace, and wonder. These scenes are almost always clear and beautiful in the, midst, in the minds of young and old alike. We love to have those little scenes, and maybe, you know, you have one that's like, I've seen them, precious moments, those little figurines, or maybe yours is an old wooden carving. Maybe you have one that's been handed down through the family. But have you ever asked yourself, how realistic is it? How true is the scene that we have, and where did it come from? Well, you've got to know that the Bible is pretty silent about the details, we have the line that tells us that there was no room at the inn, and we have the line that tells us that Mary took the baby and placed him in a manger, which is a feeding trough. So in our minds, we think that it maybe was a barn and there were animals around. It doesn't really tell us that in the scripture. In the, in the Holy Land, the tradition is that he was born in a cave which was very common for shepherds to put sheep inside a cave on nights when they needed to come in. And then, of course, who else was around? It would have been the tradition during the first century that women, normally women in the family, assisted in the birthing process. There were midwives and there were people that would come in. Was it just Mary and Joseph? We don't know. There could have been other people around. One of the things that we could be certain, there were shepherds around afterward, because it tells us in Luke chapter 2 that after they heard the angels, it says in Luke 2, verse 16 through 18, and they came, the shepherds, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known what, what the angel had told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So we recognize that after they saw the angels, the shepherds ran into town and found Mary and Joseph. So we could be certain at some point, shepherds came with them. Did they bring their sheep? Probably not. They would have left the sheep back probably with one of the shepherds and they would have gone into town, found Mary and Joseph, and then they just began making that story widely known. We have to know that the wise men probably were not there that very night because in Matthew's gospel, it says that the family was in a house. So how do we get these images? Where, where does this all come from? You've got to know that in the early days of the church, they have found wood carvings throughout Europe and in places in the Holy Land, wood carvings that seem to be a mother, a child, and a little baby. And many people believe that that might have been the very first Christmas decorations, those little nativities that were hand-carved out of wood. Some people even suggest that those were kept out all the time as a reminder of the incarnation of God. What an amazing night that was. And people would want to be reminded of it as much as they possibly could. But the tradition that we have as a Christmas decoration during this season really dates back to about 1223. And a really famous individual you may have heard of, Francis of Assisi, he constructed a nativity scene in front of his church in Italy. Now, it's unclear, was that made out of wood? Were they made out of clay? Was it stone carvings? Nobody's really sure, but that seems to be the first time a church 
embrace this nativity imagery. Now, some say that it was actually real people. And Francis got people from town to be shepherds and angels, and he used it as a teaching tool. He loved the idea of bringing the stories in Scripture to life. So this would have been a great teaching opportunity, at the very least, to have children walk through and feel as if they are a part of the story. Well, this became, in Italy, an annual event. Every year they created a nativity scene of one type or another. Then, yes, it did give way to people reenacting as a drama, again, in the late 1220s. And pretty soon people began to travel from all over Europe to view this incredible moment, this incredible teaching moment. Normally, Francis or one of the other priests would tell the story from the scripture and really enlighten people's minds about the birth of Christ. But many people would take that back to their own town, and this tradition spread throughout all of Europe. This led way to the tradition in churches, even in our country, even today, of having that that biblical drama reenacted a lot of times by children. This also gives way to lawn ornaments, nativity sets in public squares and things like that. But the details of it, maybe not necessarily as accurate as we might portray them to be. Maybe there weren't so many animals all around. Were there different kinds of sheep? Were there cattle? We just don't know. But what we do know is the next words in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 2, verse 19, this is the important part of the story. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary remembered it. Literally, the word pondered means to treasure. It's something she continued to think about and remember and maybe even share with other members of her family. It continues, the shepherds, it says, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as was told to them. So this Christmas, I, I know we love the idea that we'd like to keep the spirit of Christmas alive, but I want to suggest one of the greatest ways we could possibly do that is maybe if you had that reminder that you left out. I don't know, do you have a small wooden ornament that you could place somewhere where you'd see it on a regular basis? Maybe keep that little nativity set, just a few pieces, maybe Mary and the baby, just to remind us constantly of the birth of Christ, because that was the most incredible moment in all of human history. I want to suggest, just think about it as you're putting the ornaments and the decorations away. Is Christ simply his birth, his, his, this incarnation, this moment in history when he took on flesh, is it merely just a Christmas decoration or does it mean something deeper inside? Again, let me suggest, just think about it. Maybe there's a way we could continue to keep this thought process going, keep this joy of the season. If we just keep that reminder out somewhere, might even be an interesting conversation starter. Somebody comes over and say, hey, it's not Christmas. Why do you have this out? And you could tell them the story of Jesus.